Hello guys and welcome back to another video for M Creator Lore. Today's going to be a little bit longer video. I want to kind of show what my plans are for this project. And uh, it was suggested by um, Carrie, uh, one of my subscribers on my channel. And I wanted to actually put something together for a kiln and we're going to be using this to make crafting recipes and stuff like that based on blocks that are placed inside the kiln. Uh, it's just a random idea that I've kind of put together and I've linked it in with a GUI. I've been doing a lot of work off camera to try to make this work and uh, got pretty good far progress uh, with the mechanics and stuff in a separate workspace. So we'll be working on this for the next couple videos. Uh, today is going to be mainly uh, working on the textures and then next episode we'll be importing a lot of the mechanics and stuff like that. Um, it is cross mod supported so other mods will be able to implement their own recipes if they want. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the on and off uh, mechanics. I'm not sure if we really actually need that or not, but um, I'm sure I'll figure out a way to get something uh, set up. So this is basically the outline for the plans, uh, basically kiln, and then it will put it into the crafting recipe. And then it can be put into an output slot. The output slot is taken out. And then the items are basically, or the blocks inside the kiln are basically removed as soon as that happens. So it basically is like a more efficient, well, I wouldn't say efficient way of crafting. If you were to do it like for um, coal or something like that, then it would be able to um, take like a block of coal, coal to make like one glass or two glass or something. But either way, um, it, for what we want for uh, making a quick lime, it will probably do really good for the um, mechanics and stuff like that. And it is, like I said, it will be uh, possible for other people to add their own recipes and stuff, even without mods. So they'll be able to just uh, link it up into the JSON file and they'll be able to uh, add their own recipes and stuff like that if they want. So uh, I wanted to work on the textures. I started working with the um, clay bricks. I will probably add some recipes uh, for these. I just wanted to kind of get a general block design set up. And then I, I was adding some noise to kind of mix in with the, um, the thing. And then I was trying to get the textures for the uh, darker part a little bit mixed in. And it's a lot harder with uh, smaller textures and stuff like that. I've worked with 32 by 32 before. That seems to be my um, best point for size uh, for actually texturing and stuff. It just gives you a lot more space for um, actually making the uh, textures and stuff like that. But, you know, I worked with what I could for the uh, Minecraft and stuff. So basically what right now I'm working on is I saved the other one for the base. And now I'm basically working on the uh, furnace off texture. And then we'll be working on a few other textures. I want one for um, basically log or uh, the furnace on. And then we need one for a ladder because it's going to be a multi-structure, right? So it's going to need it'd be kind of difficult to get into. So I wanted to make something that uh, people can still get in and out of the kiln if they need to, to place the blocks or remove the blocks or whatever. So we'll have a built-in ladder into the actual thing. And that's basically what I'm working on right now. I'm just working on the ladder. So I need to put something together. I tried it with the um, lighter wood texture, but it kind of blent blend in with the actual base texture um so what i ended up doing was i was going i went with the bark texture so we'll probably find a new wood type or something later late into the game or project that will um put some something with those same uh log textures for the wood type so i think that might be uh the best idea so in game uh, or in block bench, what I ended up doing was I was I needed to make the ladder block. <clears throat> uh, this uh, changed a little bit um, since I designed it. I was playing around with the mechanics for 
uh, ladder mechanics, and it turns out you need to have like a pretty good portion of the the block that um, you can not collide with, so or you can collide with. So basically, I think I brought it down to only like a small pane in the middle, so like a two pixel pane in the middle and then I put the ladders on either side so uh, it looks a little bit different I might try to uh, make some different blocks later in the future to make things look a little bit more smooth but um, basically this was the idea and right about this point I realized that it was not going to be really noticeable with the um, the back texture so I wanted to um, create the uh, darker Wood. So we already had the textures all made. We just needed to go ahead and uh, retexture or recolor the um, the parts on the pixels. So that's basically what I'm doing right now. Is I'm just retexturing it and um, bringing in all the textures and colors. And this actually looked a lot better. Uh, so you could actually see it more prominent. So that was good. Uh, the only other thing that I needed to do was basically move it over onto the other side. And I was just disabling some of these other sides that um, didn't need textures for. And I left the cell side because we still needed to duplicate it and bring it over onto the other side there. So that's basically what I was doing there. I left it about uh, 0 0.5, I think, for distance away from the block, which is just enough to see it raised a little bit, uh, which is similar to how regular ladders work. So it kind of makes sense to have it a little bit out of the block. Uh, it helps with the texturing glitching, uh, being like um, flickering and stuff like that. So uh, I thought I would do that. But um, one of the things that we still need to do is uh, work on the furnace off texture. So I was just making sure that all this was set up for the... Um, I don't know what it's called. I think it's calling. So basically what happens when a certain block is uh, next to this block, it should disable the textures. Uh, basically what I was doing was I was just setting this up for the block itself. So we might have to go back into the model. I'll probably fix up some things because now that I realize that I did that, it's probably going to um, have some problems with my new model that I put together. But um, I also wanted to work on the rotation for these blocks, especially in the first and uh, third person perspective. Uh, so everything else looked good, but it looks very similar to a regular block here. So I wanted to get the uh, block set up so it was um, facing the player so you, they could actually see the ladder. And I was just trying to get the right rotation for this one as well. It's about negative 45 and 45. This way they, they can actually see what ladder they are. And um, I wanted, also wanted to update the, the third person view as well because it makes sense to have the rotation set the same for the rotation for the first person. So that's what I was basically doing right here. I was just setting up the rotation for that and I think after that I start working on the uh, furnace on texture after I exported all this and stuff so again this uh, model has actually changed it's uh, a little bit different it's not too much different but it's a little bit more different it's just thinner um, I'll probably have to make sure that the calling and stuff on the uh, north and south direction are disabled though because um, it would be very bad if uh, there's a block next to it and it would disable the um, textures, even though that there isn't something that needs to be disabled there. Anyhow, uh, basically at this point, I was just trying to get the texture layer in. I wanted to see if um, I could use the Minecraft fire for the furnace rather than uh, texture the whole thing automatically and just use it. So I was playing around with this at this point. I was just going, hmm, okay, is this actually possible to do? And uh, I came to terms that it probably won't be possible to do that because fire is a full block and we only need this much of the space. So I had to basically texture it all myself, which is okay. Uh, it takes a little bit more time, but um, we'll 
start working on the flame itself and we'll start with a darker kind of red and we'll start animating the process so i was thinking about like shifting it over this way and then like updating the um thing a little bit but uh, i decided to just do it by hand and try to eyeball the texture above and try to get something a little bit different um each time now it's when you're animating something like fire, it's a lot harder to work with because uh, fire remo moves in a very specific manner. And I tried my best to keep it around the similar mechanics that you would imagine fire to actually kind of work towards. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to do was add some orange to the, uh, the actual fire itself. So basically I'm just adding some orange to the t the texture and stuff and just trying to keep it uh, consistent for the flames and stuff so the next layer is kind of like a lighter orange kind of like school bus horns and then I'm just basically masking it over just just gently over the parts that um, uh, were existing so basically that and that's basically what I did for the flame it's not too much different like from Minecraft. I was just touching up some of the sides trying to get it to uh, be a little more consistent uh, through the frames. And those are all the textures so we'll be importing those now into mCreator and um, oh and I did update the workspace to the latest version of mCreator. We were a couple versions behind so um, I ported to the latest version because um, trying to keep the workspace up to date but um yeah so i was just needed to import the the other textures and then create the um animated texture from our strip so basically this is what the texture will kind of look like it looks sort of like fire it it probably could have used more frames i might go back and try to add more frames later and see if we can't um I don't know, make it a little bit more or less repetitive. It is a little bit repetitive at the moment, but for something that is, you know, hand handcrafted and stuff like that, it's not too bad. Uh, I did set the frames to about four, I believe, just because it was uh, roughly the round, the right speed for what I wanted. And we might adjust this again later on, but at the moment it'll do. Um, outside of that, uh, I just needed to give it a name. I was just um, tr telling the or replacing it with the file that I had in the uh, file thing. So we have all our textures now. We have this one, that one, and those ones, which we can use for the uh, kiln itself. Uh, we'll be start working. We'll start working on the mechanics next episode for sure. Uh, importing some of the procedures and stuff over uh, from the workspace. Uh, stay tuned. I will probably post a uh, community announcement showing uh, what it will look like. But outside of that, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.